Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look into factoring algebraic expressions. So this is kind of the follow-up activity to the uh, distributive property uh, a lesson we had with expanding algebraic expressions. We're going to be doing the reverse. Uh, so first of all, I think it's important that you guys understand what the term factor means. When I think of factor, I think of the word division because basically a factor is a number that divides into another number without having a remainder. So for example, if I have the number 10, factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. Those are our, our factors of, uh, of 10. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at algebraic expressions and we're going to try to uh, find a common factor that they both have and then uh, factor it out until we get a, uh, an expression that's simplified, uh, completely factored out. So let's start off with 4x plus 8. We want to look at our, um, our, our coefficient and our constant, just the numeral parts here, the numeric parts. And we want to find out, do they have a common factor? <clears throat> 4 and 8 both have a common factor of 4. So I'm going to divide both of them by 4. I'm going to put them inside parentheses, and since there's addition in the middle, I'm going to have addition in the middle. Now, 4 divided by 4 is 1, leaving us with x. You can either write it as 1x, but it would be better just to leave it as x. And then 8 divided by 4 is 2, and so our answer ends up being 4 times x plus 2 in parentheses. And uh, you can check it by using the distributive property. 4 times x is 4x, plus 4 times 2 is 8. And as you see, that takes us back to the original uh, original uh, uh, question, or original uh, uh, algebraic ex expression, and you know that you've done it correctly. Let's continue. <clears throat> what if we have 5x minus 25? We're going to treat this the exact same way as we tre uh, treated the other, uh, the last example, except for now we have subtraction. So I'm going to find a common factor, but we're going to have subtraction in the middle. And 5 and 25 can both be divided by 5. So 5x divided by 5, again, will leave me with 1x, or just plain old x. 25 divided by 5 will get me 5. My final answer then becomes 5 times in parentheses x minus 5. Again, you can check that by multiplying 5 times x, which is 5x, then minus 5 times 5, which is 25, and we would find out we have the exact same answer. All right, now uh, what happens uh, when we have a larger uh, coefficient with our variable? <coughs> For example, let's have 20 y minus 16. What if we have this? Well, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to find out what is a common uh, uh, factor for both 20 and 16. Well, the greatest common factor I can think of, the greatest one, would be 4. Um, and so, even though I can't get y whittled down all the way to y, it's okay. 20 divided by 4 is 5, and then y, minus uh, 16 divided by 4 is 4, the way you know you're done is you look at the 5y and the 4, and you think to yourself, is there any other numbers I can factor out? Other than 1, there's nothing. Therefore, this is as simplified as I can get it. This is my final answer. You're doing great. Let's go ahead and keep rolling. Number 4. What happens if I have the variable following uh, the algebraic? You gotta love doing this at school. Got announcements coming on. Let's try this again. All right, negative nine uh, plus six m. Okay. In this case, we need to find a common factor, and we can divide nine and six both by three. So I'm gonna put the three over here. 9, or negative 9, divided by 3 gets me negative 3. Bring my plus sign down. 6m divided by 3 gets me 2m. 
Now, does negative 3 and 2m have anything else in common factor-wise? No, they don't. Therefore, that is my final answer. You're going to find these are all very similar. Once you get the idea, you get the hang of uh, how to do this, it becomes a very simple game to get through this. All right, for our fifth one, we're going to kind of bump up the, uh, the level of difficulty here. What if I have a negative 12 minus 8n? Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, um, when I see a negative sign and a subtraction sign, I like to go back to the LCO we've talked about. That's leave, change, opposite. When I do this, now I see I have a negative 12 plus negative 8. Now I want to figure out, is there a common factor I can divide here? Well, you may at first um, sight say, well, you can divide them both by 4. And if I do that, I'm going to get um, a negative 3 uh, plus negative 2n. And then when we ask ourselves, does negative 3 and negative 2n have any other factors in common, you say, you know what? They actually do. They still have a negative 1 because negative 3 is equal to negative 1 times 3, as is negative 2. Um, and so we still have one more factor. So what we'll end up doing then is we'll make this negative 4. And so we'll end up having this being 3 plus 2n. And again, just to make sure we've got this, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 4 times 2n is negative 8n. And that gets us back to the original answer. So our little lesson here is remember that when you have two negatives, we can go ahead and factor out a negative 1 because that is a factor in this problem. All right, we are almost done. You guys are doing wonderful. Let's do, uh, we got two more problems left. Uh, let's try negative 15m minus 20. All right, we, we've been down this path. We know what to expect. We're going to use our LCO again. Leave, change, opposite. And now I know I can factor out, well, it looks like a negative 5. Negative 15m divided by negative 5 will get me positive 3m. Bring down my addition sign. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 will get me positive 4. Negative 3, or uh, I'm sorry, positive 3 and positive 4 have nothing else in common factor-wise other than 1. We are done. Hopefully this is becoming easier for you if you've had any trouble at all. Here's our final problem, and we are done with this. You could have more than two, uh, two terms in one of these problems. So let's say we have uh, 8r minus 10s minus 12t. Now notice, I have two minus signs, but my 8 is positive. Therefore, I can leave it just like this. I don't have to adjust anything. Because if I made these both into addition, it would be a negative 10s and a negative 12t and a positive 8r. I would not have a negative 1 I could get from all three of them. Therefore, I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going to go ahead and find out what is a common factor for all three of these terms. Well, I can divide them all by 2, it looks like. I'm going to put a 2 here. 8r divided by 2 gets me 4r. 10s divided by 2 will get me 5s. 12t divided by 2 will get me 6t. And I can look again here and I can say, well, 4, 5, and 6, other than a positive 1, there's nothing else they uh, can factor out the same. Therefore, this is my final answer. I hope you found this helpful and I wish you a great day.